Since I'm working in influencer marketing for six years, there are an endless amount of the great campaigns, but I personally love the campaigns that involve offline part. So one of the examples, we prepare gift boxes so with merch related to the game, to the influencers. They were showing it in their integrations. Also, they hide these boxes in their hometowns with geotag and uh, said anyone can find this box and uh, keep it for themselves. Game designs are very addictive because I got a addicted to this game called Into the Dead 2. I was like, I had to log in every day to finish the daily objectives. It's called Loyalty Program. Yeah. I played it for like three years, <laughs> every single day. When I just started my career, influencer marketing wasn't that popular. That's why it was really exciting for me to work in this sphere that is growing rapidly. But why Zorka? Zorka was one of the first agencies who started running massive influencer marketing campaigns for gaming brands. It immediately drew my attention. I read on your LinkedIn about holiday-based marketing. Is it about a marketer being holiday or is it... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> We had some occasions that can be really relevant to the brands. For example, Halloween or Christmas or Cyber Monday or Black Friday that you can benefit from running the campaign at the same time. Come up with a great idea that will match the occasion influencers you selected and also the brand. The combination of these factors will boost your performance very well. One, two. Hello everyone, this is Shubham Tiwari. I'm the Head of Content Marketing and Socials at Philo, the universal API for creator data. And I welcome you all to the season two of Impulse, Google's number one rated podcast on influencer marketing. Today, we are excited to have with us Christina Nikenko as the Director of Influencer Marketing at Zorka Agency. Christina has a talent for blending creativity with strategy to create powerful campaigns. She's a leader in the industry, known for connecting brands with the perfect influencers and driving real results. Beyond her work at Zorka, Christina is also passionate about empowering the next generation as a mentor for women in tech. Welcome to Impulse, Christina. Yeah, thank you so much for the introduction and having me here. Let's start on a fun note. If you could match make a brand with any influencer across the globe, who would it be and why? Well, that's a great question. Probably if I had the power of match made anyone with any influencer, I would probably pass on the commercial side and will highlight some charity organization. So for example, uh, there is such a, a gaming influencer called Multiplier. If you like and passionate about games, you'll definitely know him. And uh, he is also known for helping some charity organization. And I would probably use him as a platform to highlight some some global problems, maybe like support some hospital or some organization that support kids and like helps kids to develop uh, with the help of gaming. I think that could be one of the options that I will go for. Very interesting to collaborate with a gamer to, you know, address some real life issues and thoughtful or I must say creative approach. Actually, there is one organization called Game Changer and they are helping kids with games because games, it's not only a waste of time, but it can also boost your creativity. And this is one of the organization. I think it will be like a perfect match with the market. Right. right. TikTok or Instagram? <laughs> Well, TikTok. I know that uh, TikTok is banned in India. I, I feel so sorry for you guys, but <laughs> but this is a great platform to, uh, for organic discovery. For example, I go anywhere. I try to find this place on TikTok and you will have like a lot of reviews and uh, just the fun content to watch. So TikTok. <laughs> What's your screen time, by the way, related to TikTok? Do you have an idea? Well, I think I spent approximately half an hour because I try to limit myself. <laughs> but if I don't, if it's a weekend, I can definitely spend there like a one hour and a half or more. Wonderful. Most underrated platform for influencer marketing right now? Well, if you ask me, I think it's LinkedIn because LinkedIn is transforming so fast. And right now it's not only platform for finding the job, but also to finding the influencers. And it's a great platform for B2B platform like services and products. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. And you, do you like the new video focus trend on LinkedIn? I do. Just because I prefer video format more than just uh, pictures and uh, articles. That's why, yes. Yeah. What about you? I mean, I'm getting used to it. Not sure. <laughs> Not exactly scrolling on LinkedIn yet. 
the videos. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm still, you know, catching up with this new trend on LinkedIn. What do you think is the biggest myth about influencer marketing? Maybe the more followers, the better results you get. A lot of brands are hunting for big names, but it not necessarily will get them the higher performance. Reach, yes, but not engaged audience, the one that will stay in the product for long. So I think this is one of the biggest myth. Okay. Do you want to elaborate on that? What exactly matters when it comes to influencer marketing? If not the, you know, let's say, let's call them vanity metrics. Let's give us, give our audience an example. One creator with 100,000 followers with better engagement rate or one creator with 1 million followers with, you know, less engagement rate. Depending on the goal of the campaign, if it's a brand awareness campaign, I would go with a 1 million one. But if... You want, I don't know, downloads, sales and stuff. It's better to go to the mid-range influencers because the conversions, they are higher and the audience is more loyal and engaged and actually trust the influencer rather than watch this content just because it's a sort of entertainment. Why, Why do we say this, Christina? Because I've heard this before as well. Like if a creator is very big, they may not have a very loyal audience. But when I see, let's say a creator like Mr. Beast or Speed or, you know, anyone, they have, you know, massive loyal followership. So what do we mean exactly by a loyal following? Yeah, I think there is a difference in big creators as well. They might have a loyal audience and it can be super engaged, depends on the category. But some of the influence, for example, on Instagram, these celebrities, they have mass following. They have also celebrities who are following them. So we are not considering them as our target audience uh, as a sake of their example. But for example, if you want to target Gen Z or people who like to play games uh, such as, I don't know, Stumble Guys or Minecraft, I would definitely go to Mr. Beast. He will boost your performance and bring you the audience uh, you're exactly looking for. Yeah. So the the main point is that there is a classification of big creators as well. And uh, the mid-range is where, you know, most of the people follow some creators by choice. Okay, I like the content of this person, even if he's not as famous as Mr. Beast. So I think that way they are, you know, they have more loyal followership. Speaking of campaigns, what is your favorite campaign so far? Hands down, the best campaign that you've worked on. There are so many great campaigns. Since I'm working in influencer marketing for six years, so there are endless amount of the great campaigns. But I personally love the campaigns that involve some offline part. So one of the examples, we sent some, we prepared some like gift boxes so with some merch and some special items related to the game, to the influencers. And they were showing it in their integrations. And also they hide these boxes in their hometowns and put some geotech and uh, said anyone who go there can find this box and keep it for themselves. Just post some stories on Instagram and uh, we'll be grateful. I think this is one of their campaigns that comes to my mind just right away. So fun. I mean, it reminds, you know, us of treasure hunt stories and, you know, the games used to play. Exactly. Yeah. What initially drew you to influencer marketing and how did you, you know, end up working at Zork? Well, when I just started my career, influencer marketing wasn't that popular. I had to Google what is influencer marketing. And uh, I think maybe only 10% of the brands try this traffic source so far. And maybe few percent of them actually implemented this as a permanent traffic source. That's why it was really exciting for me to work in this sphere that is growing rapidly and I can actually make an impact. That's why I was really, really excited to start my journey in influencer marketing. But why Zorka? Zorka was one of the first agencies back then who started running like massive influencer marketing campaigns for gaming brands. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's immediately drew my attention. Okay. And what makes Zorka different now from other agencies? Good question. I think Zorka stand out uh, in comparison with other agencies thanks to its combination of technologies and also creativity. Because uh, when we run the campaigns, we are focused on not only some great idea to implement and make it, uh, make it engaging, but also on their analytics, on the strategy, we take into consideration what the competitors are doing, what are the trends on the market, deeply analyze their audience of their brand and also the influencers which were promoting this brand ad. So I think this is one of the things. 
Okay. And what new features or new technology pieces do you work on nowadays? So right now we are optimizing our work with the help of AI a lot. Uh, we also requesting uh, deep analytics from the influencers, not only take into consideration like the audience metrics, but also the breakdown of like platforms. So we see how the channels are growing in order to get the most promising ones now in order to get the higher reach and the snowball effect in the future. So I would say the analytics, this is one of the keys that we focus in on at the moment. Okay. And what are your coverage plans to expand into, you know, in-demand platforms like Twitch, Snapchat, and LinkedIn? Uh, we're working with Twitch a lot. This is one of the main platforms for gaming clients. So, so it's not something new for them, for us. And so we will continue working since uh, live content, it's very high engaging and performant in terms of conversions. But speaking about LinkedIn and Snapchat, LinkedIn, we already discussed with you, and I think it has a great potential, especially for certain brands. So we definitely plan to expand there. And Snapchat is more like for brand awareness campaigns, I would say. Brands are not as active there in comparison with TikTok and Instagram, but for omni-channel strategy, I think this is also a good platform to add to your portfolio. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, we were in conversation with you regarding uh, LinkedIn. So that's one of our interest areas as well. And speaking of trends and shifts uh, from a marketer's point of view, that which is your role, what recent trends uh, you're noticing which are of interest to you? And can you like give us like two, three shifts in the influencer market? I think one of the biggest shifts that all the brands are trying to measure the effect of influencer marketing. It's not only about the reach and engagement, but also like a deeper metrics as a conversion, as organic uplift, as engagement of old users and so on. And right now they take it as one of their main traffic sources and trying to understand the impact of influencer marketing on different traffic sources. Like, uh, will it be cheaper to buy the same user via uh, Google if you run influencer marketing campaign before that? Uh, definitely. Uh, and it can be proven now. I think this is one of their like biggest shifts. The second one, I think AI content, it's growing, it's grown rapidly on every platform and also transparency that uh, right now no one wants to hide yeah. the ads. It's okay to, to say that uh, this piece of content was sponsored and audience appreciates it even more. Do you like it? AI usage in content creation? Yes, definitely. I think it's, if I were the creator, maybe I will one day. <laughs> it can easy your life and you will provide the same quality content, but in a shorter period of time. And also you can get more content because right now, most of the content creators, they are having full-time work, like jobs, and they can just dedicate so much time to the content. Uh, but with the help of AI, they could. And I think right. this is great. Great. We hope to see you, you know, become a creator one day. What kind <laughs> of creator would you become? I don't know, maybe a travel influencer. You like to travel, okay. I do. <laughs> Wonderful. When you become a creator, you have to come again and give us another interview and tell us how it is to become a creator. After <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I will. So, Christina, speaking of trends, as Zorka provides deep insights into influencers, audience and content, are you looking to enhance upon text and, you know, tag analysis by expanding into video analytics? Yeah, definitely. Since video is the main ad format, we're definitely trying to understand how it performs. We're trying to analyze the subtitles in order to find influencers who are talking about some specific topics in order to make the match was a brand more organic and take into consideration the values. Also, it helps us to check the brand, a brand affinity and also the brand safety because some of their big names we are working with, they have really strict guidelines and we need to check the influencers carefully before signing any contracts with them. So definitely. So are you developing brand safety or you're looking for it right now? Where, where are you Oh, we already have some tools that help us to identify what channels are more brand safety and which we should avoid and just analyzing subtitles. So this is something that that can solve the issue. Yeah. Yeah, of course, like what creator is exactly seeing is solved by the subtitles. But visuals are also important. We can see, you know, there can be problematic imagery in the video, which we can miss. That's true. Especially when you work with some brands that have IPs, they can't 
like show in some IP part in their sponsored content. Not only sponsored content, even at the full video. That's why you need to analyze it before running the campaign. So by IP, you mean the intellectual property like logos and all? Like if somebody's showing, let's say, a Nike logo without their permission, something like that? Yeah, like for example, like Marvel. You have yeah. IP for Marvel or some other like brands, which are limiting you in your marketing activities. So right. that's what I'm talking about. Right. Speaking of expansion, Zorka has worked with major gaming uh, companies like Gameloft and Playrix, if that's the right pronunciation. How are we going to see this relationship evolving, especially with platforms like Twitch on the Ascent? Well, some of the gaming clients run monthly influencer marketing campaigns, and some are just related to some game updates or some new seasons. And depending on the strategy, we are selecting the platform carefully. So Twitch, this is a great platform to build your community and run monthly campaigns. And you can also get very good engaging audience there just because gaming i think it's maybe 70 percent of twitch audience in general that's why as i already mentioned before twitch one of the major platforms for gaming clients but it's not limited by twitch we are heavily working with youtube which has also really promising audience and it distinguish from different platforms due to its snowball effect because the videos stay there permanently unless the creator deletes it so you will see the boost of your performance over the time even like few years later you can measure some downloads and some traffic coming from your previous sponsorships but did you check out that new chinese game which is making you know waves wukong have you seen that i haven't played but i've seen i mean i was just watching the gameplay on twitch one day and amazing i mean twitch is like you know it gives you that kind of experiences even if you're not a gamer I mean, you can watch it, but I'm not a gamer, but I loved watching that gameplay. I must say that was really impressive. And Twitch is great because you can add some add-ons and some even extensions. We as an agency can build it for the brands and influencers can use it during the stream to make it more interactive. Uh, For example, if you downloaded the game and passed level first, like so the first, second, or like third, your nickname will be shown on the screen. So it makes audience to actually follow the influencers and interact during the stream. So this is really cool. Can you give us more example? Let's say Gameloft, when you worked with them, what kind of add-ons that you gave to the influencers while playing their games? I can tell not about Gameloft, but uh, for example, uh, Playroom, Raid Shadow Legends. There are like uh, multiple campaigns. Uh, first, for example, um, we are aiming users uh, to go on a deeper levels, you know, not just download the game because, uh, okay, you download, but if it's too complicated, you can leave the game. And we are focused on the high retention of the users. That's why we are creating this extensions that will highlight that user passes a certain level or he opens shard and you will see not only your nickname, but also the game characters during the stream. And all of this motivates users to stand on the stream longer and also participate in the game plan. And also we created some extension for the community, not for the new users that we're trying to attract, but for existing ones who can get some benefits if they play the game for certain days. Like For example, if you log into the game for seven days in a row, you will get some in-game bonus. And this is where you can get the promo code and implement it in the game. Yeah, I mean, game designs are very addictive. Because I got addicted to this game called Into the Dead 2. It's a mobile phone game. And I was like, I had to log in every day to, you know, finish the daily, you know, objective. Loyalty program. It's called loyalty program. Yeah. (laughs) To the game. I played it for like three years, every single day. I mean, I was very addictive. It's very interesting, you know, working with creators and these game companies. I'm sure. Speaking of companies, Philo APIs, of course, you know, they provide creator data. Yeah. So how do you think tools like ours can enhance your strategies at big agencies like Zorka? Well, I think it wouldn't be that effective without the companies like yours, because the data, this is the basic at the moment. No one is just running their campaigns based on their own feelings. It's all data driven. And uh, we definitely need to understand what is 
behind the channels? What is it behind the content? And thank you guys for providing such a deep and detailed analytics on the channel because it makes the decision maker making so easier and more effective. Really appreciate it. Can you give us like example of like in what ways do you think API integration can streamline the campaign process from influencer section to post campaign analysis? Can you give us some like numbers in terms of percentage? Like yeah, first of all, like upper integrations are cool for the agencies and brands who have their own platforms because the processes inside of different organization are can be like dramatically different. That's why having our own tool, like our platform and having up integration integration is so beneficial for us because we don't need to adjust uh, to some SaaS tools which are on the market and maybe not uh, match our needs at the moment. Uh, second of all, it helps on every stage from influencer discovery uh, to the post analysis, as you already mentioned, because on the discovery stage, you can just easily use filters and select the influencers which are matching the criteria and then go deeply into the details and narrow down the search to to the to the more niche creators which will match with the values and and the brand then it also helps in communication because you provide like the content information and we can just use these emails and contact the influencers directly also when we run the campaigns itself, it can also measure the results in the real time. We don't need to go to like, to follow the link and see what's going on on the channel. If if their sponsored content is still there, because some of the influencers are deleting it, unfortunately. And yeah, you, you see everything in one place and all the data is updated. So it's amazing. And all the clients require post-buy reports and... It takes so much less time for us just to download it from the platform rather than do it manually in some Google Sheets. Wonderful. I think I read on your LinkedIn somewhere about holiday and occasion-based marketing. So now taking a, you know, let's say marketer's view. Can you tell us what is it like? Is it about a marketer being a holiday or is it? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish every day can be a holiday. Yeah, this is a, some occasions that are, can be really relevant to the brands. For example, Halloween or Christmas or, I don't know, Cyber Monday or Black Friday. This is a big events that you can benefit from running the campaigns at the same time. And uh, if you prepare to it like ahead, book every influencer, come up with a great idea that will match the occasion itself. Influencers you selected and also the brand, the combination of these factors so will boost your performance very, very well. And this is some, okay, even that can be related to the product itself. But if we're talking about some holidays, for, for example, the day of coffee and your Starbucks, let's say, it's better to highlight attention to your brand to some specific occasion, which is already like talking for itself. Right, right. So for the Q4, we start preparing like few months before because uh, a lot of events and holidays like Halloween, Christmas, a lot of brands want to to be there like in the top charts uh, during these events because the audience is also is more engaged. They are on vacation. They have free time to scroll on social media and just spend their money and spend their time. They don't want to waste it. So. Yeah, I mean, I came across this, you know, business YouTube channel, which was talking about a company which only sells on one day, that is Halloween. And they make so much of business in one day that this is planned for the next, you know, year's Halloween. I'm forgetting the name of the brand, but yeah, I mean, it's fun. I guess holiday and occasion-based marketing is essentially capitalizing on the fun, fun part. Yeah, that's that's absolutely. And for example, we're working with e-commerce brand. Um, I don't want to give the name, but for example, we are planning the campaign on one day. Like in one day, we will run more than 100 influencers just because the next day is a sales, like Black Friday. That's why you want everyone to know about your brand to this exact day. And they don't have time to think about, okay, maybe I'll buy it or not to buy it. No, you need to act right away. And of course, uh, this kind of push campaigns will bring you more results than two months of activity. Wow. Can you give us more details without giving names? Like mm -hmm. what are these hundred creators or influencers are going to do? Do you give them the same, you know, instructions as to, you know, what to push on that particular day? Can you tell us more about that? 
Yeah, sure. We categorize the influencers. For example, there would be sales, sales related to tech products, so to clothes, to, I don't know, sport boots. Uh, that's why we categorize the influencers who is the best fit for this exact set of products. Like, for example, tires for the car. So we use auto influencers and tech influencers for promoting some iPhones or some, I don't know, laptops and so on. And so for like fashion influencers for clothes and uh, all of them, of course, the briefs for each category is uh, crafted for the category and also for the products that we are promoting. Uh, But everyone has to go at the same time. Right. On the same day. So you're working with the e-commerce company, not the sellers on the e-commerce company. Uh, with a commerce company, yes. So it was a marketplace and there are a lot of different sellers. <sighs> okay. Sellers can have their own influencers, uh, but most of the time they're just going to the platform itself, to the marketplace and saying, hey, can you promote my products? Uh, two strategies. Wonderful. I mean, it's so fascinating because they'll have their own product pages where they can feature mm-hmm. their own you know, influencers if they want. But this e-commerce platform is going after on a particular day, advertising for all the categories or most of the categories to boost the sales. Yes, that's that's correct. It's wonderful. I mean, we're looking uh, you know, ahead to this wonderful festive season because mm-hmm. we also celebrate a lot of festivals around this time. And Halloween is something that I'm particularly very, very excited about every year. This is a new thing for me. So I enjoy it a lot. So you answered my you know, question about what's uh, next for Zaka, but can you tell us about what's next for you personally? What is up ahead for the rest of the year? Oh, for me personally, I'm relocating to US. Uh, so I will be focused on that market uh, more. So I'm moving just in, in two weeks. So I'm really excited. We operate globally and we cover like major geos such as English speaking countries, Europe, PAS, Asia, MENA region. Uh, we want our teams to be located in the specific regions. So I'm going to US and I will be focusing on that market. And uh, it's really exciting for me. I'm uh, attending TwitchCon. So if any from the listeners are going to be there, don't hesitate to contact me and we'll see you there. <laughs> Wonderful. You heard it. So TwitchCon is, we are going to put some information about that as well. Great to hear that Zorka is expanding, you know, on ground. So last couple of questions, we make our guests go through. You have to give us a book suggestion, your favorite book or the one you're reading right now. And a person you have to nominate for the show, a creator maybe. Are you, are you actually inviting not only professionals, but uh, creators as well? Yeah, we do. But of course, a professional like you and or in, in case if you know a very big creator, We'll happy to accommodate them as well. Good luck. Uh, good luck with the Mr. Beast. <laughs> right. I believe you can handle it, guys. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'm big, impact, big in terms of their quality of work and impact, whatever they're leaving on the society. Anyone you, who you admire. I can give you the exact name, but the direction where you can look into. So I had an interesting conversation with with some lady. She called herself as a grand fluencer because you know not only Gen Z, J A, like or millennials are influencers, but also the older generation, and they actually go an extra mile in order to deliver like a brand messages. And I was watching her her stuff, her content, and I was really really impressed how deep in detail she goes and it wasn't on the brief the brief is standard like 60 seconds but she can speak like two minutes and reply to the audience and just try to make the difference and impact i think it's interesting if you invite maybe different generations on your podcast and try to compare their approach and their motivation how they how they do this the sponsorships it's a great idea thank you so much i'll certainly write to you uh, to get the more more details and if you like to give us a book recommendation yeah one of the last books i've read atomic habits i think it's really great because it's all in our head and the sky is the limit and if you just make a small changes in your life you can succeed and succeed a lot and just yeah start from your habits i think that's a great point to end and the podcast speaking about success habits and you know empowering creators working with brands if you need any help regarding all those things you can connect with christina we'll put her linkedin link in the bio and yeah if you have any feedback for us please leave a comment in comment section follow us for more such conversations we'll see you in the next one thank you thank you so much i have a one uh question for you oh okay 
What costume do you have for Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like Mandalorian a lot. So I'm trying to at least get the, you know, the helmet or whatever, the mask, you want to call it, that on for, for the Halloween. So yeah, that's my, that's my answer. What are you doing? Listeners, definitely uh, subscribe for the channel and uh, uh, we're looking forward to see you in this costume. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best pitch for our channel, by the way. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much for this podcast. Impulse, the influencer marketing podcast is brought to you by Philo. Philo is the easiest way to get access to authenticated creator data from hundreds of different platforms. To know more about Philo, visit getphilo.com. That's get p h y l l o.com. Also, make sure to search for influencer marketing podcast in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any of your favorite podcast listening platforms. And don't forget to click subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Philo, thank you so much for listening.